Hey guys, it's Sarah at Finding Costa Real Estate and I want to just give you some insight on what's going on in the current real estate market. So a bunch of things have changed in the last 30 days and I really want to fill you in on exactly what's happening in the real estate market both across America and specifically here in San Diego to get you some really good data so you guys know what's going on. So the last couple months have been filled with a ton of articles with clickbaity headlines like these all talking about a potential market crash. So all across America, people are being bombarded with news articles like this. And if that's not enough, we also had Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell state that a correction in the housing market would actually be a good thing. Um, there was a big imbalance between supply and demand. Housing prices were going up at an unsustainably fast level. So the deceleration in housing prices that we're seeing should help bring sort of prices more closely in line with rents and other housing market fundamentals. Um, and, you know, that's a good thing. For the longer term, what we need is supply and demand to get better aligned so that housing prices go up at a reasonable level, uh, at a reasonable pace, and that uh, people can afford houses again. And I think we, so we probably in the housing market have to go through a correction to get back to that place. So as we all know, the Fed has been raising rates rapidly over the last several months. And when the Fed raises rates, that doesn't directly affect mortgage rates. It has a trickle down effect on mortgage rates, but we have seen mortgage rates steeply increase over the last couple months. So as you can see here, over the last nine months, interest rates have spiked to a level much higher than the last 10 years. 30 year fixed rate mortgages are now hovering around 7%. But that's not the only thing that's working against home buyers. So banks all across America are worried about a potential 2008 style crash. So if we do see a huge recession, the big banks know that this time no one's coming to save them. We already did the 2008 bailouts and that kind of thing's not going to happen again. So banks have to be really careful with their lending guidelines to reduce their risk in volatile times like this. So to protect themselves, banks are going to lock down riskier investments. So not only are mortgage rates around 7%, but jumbo high balance loans are even harder to get. Not to mention investor loans, non-owner occupied rates are as high as 9% and that's for conventional mortgages. I'm not even talking about non-QM or hard money or private money. Just a conventional non-owner occupied mortgage can cost you about 9% at this point. The loan process is also really tough on buyers. Underwriters are needing extra documentation right now to help mitigate their risk as much as possible. Risky buyers won't be able to get loans without paying high points and fees if they can even get a loan at all. Okay, so how should this be affecting the real estate market? Well, super simple. As interest rates increase, monthly payments also increase, and that decreases the number of buyers that can qualify for that monthly payment. So let's look at an illustration right here. So this is two mortgage options on a million dollar loan with 20% down. So the first one you can see is 4% and that's going to give you a monthly PITI of about 4,800, right? And that's all in, that includes your property taxes, all of that. Now, instead we're hovering around 7%. So let's look at the same purchase price, same cash down, and instead a 7% loan, that's a payment difference of $1,500 a month. That's going to take a ton of buyers out of the marketplace because they just simply cannot qualify and cannot afford that monthly payment. So this is drastically reducing the number of buyers that can afford a million dollar home. Now you might be saying, yeah, a million dollars. Well, I'm in San Diego. You're in San Diego. San Diego houses are all like a million dollars right now. So this is a huge effect on us because so little of our population can actually afford a million dollar house. Here's the problem. This interest rate change has happened so fast that sellers don't even fully understand what's happening. So prices are rapidly starting to go down, but the sellers that listed their properties in late August, early September, they don't want to reduce their price because as real estate agents, we didn't tell them when we were listing that prices are going down because prices weren't going down then. And so we're now having to backtrack saying, hey, prices are going down. I know that you didn't know this was happening, but it's happening. And so we're having to come back to our sellers that listed in August and say, hey, your property's been sitting and bad news. Market value's gone down drastically over the last month. And that's really, really tough on sellers. So... Sellers don't want to reduce their price, 
but the new listings are coming on at lower prices and existing sellers are lagging on these price decreases. So this has brought the market to basically a standstill. There are very few buyers actually looking for houses right now and even fewer investors, especially mom and pop style investors that are going to have to pay nine or 10% on a mortgage. Those kind of people are just going to take their money and put it into the stock market instead because the stock market's cheap right now. So then on top of that, adding to the slowdown, the only sellers that are selling right now are really selling out of necessity because who wants to trade a 3% loan for a new 7% loan? It doesn't make sense. So most sellers are just going to sit and wait and see what happens. So right now we're mostly seeing DDDR sellers. That's death, divorce, downsizing, and relocating. And then we're actually seeing a few remaining FOMO sellers. That's fear of missing out, right? Because we were at the height of the market and some people were kind of waiting to see the height and they missed it. And so now they're jumping in right now to sell because they don't want to miss out on all the gains. So markets all across America are starting to cool, but as I've been saying, it's lagging, right? Redfin though just released a list of the 20 markets cooling the fastest and San Diego is actually number four. So I'll pull that list up for you. So Seattle, Las Vegas, San Jose, and then number four, San Diego, followed by Sacramento. And as you can see, it's a lot of West Coast cities. We are seeing the West Coast cooling the fastest. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about San Diego specifically. So we're gonna take a look at the countywide median home price over the last 12 months, and this is super interesting. So here it is here. And you can see we're starting with October, 2021 at the top, going down to our last month of data, September, 2022. We really hit our peak in April of 2022 with the median home price for single family homes hitting an even million dollars. Well, as rates have increased, the affordability has decreased and we're seeing prices go down countywide. So September's median price was 915,000 and we're expecting October of 2022 to be even lower. So my rule of thumb for sellers is that houses are selling right now for roughly the same price as the end of 2021. So when you're looking to price a house, you need to eliminate all sales from March, 2022 to August, 2022, right? In your comp analysis, those gains are gone. You need to go back to November, 2021 or February, 2022, something like that. That's where our prices are at now. All right, I got one more chart for you guys. This is the days on market until sale. So you can see once again, we hit our peak in April or May. That's when homes were selling the fastest. And now we've slowed down to levels we haven't actually seen since 2020. As of September last month, homes are taking an average of 32 days to sell. And that means because it's an average, 50% of homes are sitting for more than 32 days. Sellers are having to be patient and wait on buyers, but they're also having to be proactive and adjust their prices accordingly because all signs are pointing to home prices continuing to decrease for the rest of the year. Now, in my professional opinion, I think we're going to see buyers re-enter the market in the spring after the holiday season because if rates stay above 6% by April or May, that will likely be considered the new normal. And so pent up buyer demand is going to bring an influx of buyers back into the market because we need people buying houses, right? People have, they have babies, they get married, et cetera, and they want to buy a house. And that's going to, all of this slowdown and lack of buyers in the market is going to create pent up demand. And then at a certain point, like people are just going to start jumping in. So that's what I'm expecting to see next year. Obviously no one can predict the future. All we can do is look at the data we have and then give our best guess. So there's a lot of uncertainty happening right now, but I hope this gave you some really good data on what's actually happening in the market. And as always, you can reach out to me with any real estate related questions, and I am absolutely happy to answer all of your questions and give you professional advice. So feel free to reach out to me with any real estate related questions, issues, anything, happy to chat with you.